All right. Thanks so much, everyone. It's great to have you back and welcome. Um, there, this has been an incredible day. I feel like a little bit overwhelmed with all the things that I've been thinking about. But really, the thing that stood out to me so much is about this piece around partnerships. Um, I've been hearing it in so many different ways, so many different times. I loved Anna's comment about you can't uh, make a net with one spider. That really spoke to me. Um, but I also really found we had a really interesting conversation about making mistakes and allowing students to make mistakes in this work. But I'm also like actually having the courage to make mistakes and be better and aim for better. There's, there's something definitely there for me. Um, but I'm going to introduce some other student leaders to provide their reflections. So first we have Pani Burke, who is a uh, um, Sorry, uh, completed a PhD in population and public health at the University of British Columbia in Canada. And then we have Akwia Kwao, it, it's a lecturer and PhD focusing student on student health and well being at the University of Sanko, Central Lancashire. Um, so over to you, Kuni. Thank you so much, Julia. And good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone. Um, wow, we have been audience to so many inspiring presentations today, documenting such innovating health promotion, promoting initiatives on campuses all over the world. And I'd like to briefly reflect out loud with you all on three themes that I saw emerge in our dialogues today. So first, in health promoting campuses, students are partners. Many presentations have highlighted how critical it is to involve students in all stages of health promotion activities. In order to succeed, we know that programming and policies must reflect the unique needs of the campus's student body. And we know, and as we've seen in our many of our conversations today, this engagement must be intentional, it should be reciprocal and equitable. The second theme, in health promoting campuses, collaborations within and between institutions is critical in fostering both innovation and research. We've seen today presentations showing research that has played a critical role in developing health promoting initiatives and you know, even evaluating the implementation of the Okanagan Charter across institutions. Our campuses by nature are abundant with health and research experts. Let's leverage that and expand our research capacity. I've seen firsthand in my own doctoral work developing mental health screening uh, interventions for students how a sustained collaboration between administration, researchers, various health units, whether that's health promotion, counseling services, medical services, and students themselves drives evidence-based and student-centered uh, intervention and programming development. And finally, in the health promoting campus, students, faculty, and staff are recognized and celebrated as whole persons. When we step into the learning environment, we don't stop becoming parents, caregivers, partners. Racism doesn't cease to exist. We are not unburdened of our financial strains. We come into the academy wearing many hats. And as we've seen today with presentations highlighting food insecurity, anti-racism initiatives, climate well-being, and harm reduction in the campus context, that the campus is more than just a learning environment. It's a reflection of the world we continuously walk through. And in recognizing these nuances, we have seen campuses begin to take holistic system level approaches to well-being. And we've collectively come to recognize a challenge uh, in this sense. And we've now begun to you know, uh, map out the abundance of resources and approaches that we've accumulated. We know so much and we have so much to learn from each other. I think our next major challenge is mapping everything that we know out and using it strategically and collaboratively and avoiding reinventing the wheel and taking inventory of all that we know. There is so much out there and we have so much available to us. And on that note, I'll pass the mic over to Equia. Okay, thank you. Um, so my reflections are that I've kind of put it into four key points. The first one is that I, I, I got a sense that it's, it's so important for us to continue to build a strong evidence base for health promoting universities. 
And that strong evidence base is clearly reflected in some of the things that were said. So for example, um, it was mentioned, Hazel mentioned the fact that, you know, the health promoting networks were actually well respected in the UK. And also in one of the discussions, in one of the breakout rooms, um, uh, it was mentioned that um, the Higher Education Authority over in Ireland um, actually embraced the Okanagan Charter. And I think that's that's key. And it, those things couldn't have happened without the continuing development of a strong evidence base. The other thing um, that I'd like us to take away is to think about how we generate, continue to generate funds because the funds I found from some of the projects that I've heard, those projects couldn't have happened without the, the resources, the, the, those who donated money, um, or they were able to raise funds to create some really um, amazing, phenomenal projects and interventions that have really transformed lives, both on campus and within the community. So I think that the evidence base that is strong will help to create and keep the momentum that has started with um, building health promoting universities. One of the things that really struck me, my own particular research is, intra is around um, student health and well-being and how students manage their health um, whilst they are studying. And so I thought that that would be what I'd be focusing on when I, you know, I actually talked to you. But there was something that really hit me when um, it was mentioned that uh, in research done at um, MTU over in Ireland, um, if you are not busy, this is one a quote from one of the participants. If you're not busy, you're not worthy. And that was a support staff that made that comment. And I think that's quite profound because it, it actually tells us a lot about the work culture within higher education globally. And I know our colleague from um, Australia mentioned about the casualization of the workforce. And so that means that it really stresses the importance of having a holistic approach and holistic response to dealing with, you know, health promoting universities. So there's no adage that says happy staff, then you have happy customers. So I would say happy staff, happy students. And so let us focus, I think, moving forward as well on very much looking at the staff health and well-being and really making that a quite a prominent um, feature in this whole um, agenda. And sort of some takeaways is that you know health promotion is creative there's a lot of creativity collaboration community and i think let us continue to care and i believe that you know as a as a sector we will be making a huge difference so on that note i'd like to say thank you and hand over to you julia